National Weather Service, no matter where you are. Sometimes you don't have cellular coverage, and ham radios come in so handy for uh, storm events. Uh, any, even a, a weather radar or a weather radio, a weather radio will work. Do you know how to talk? A weather radio. A weather. Let's get rolling. Good morning. It's Tuesday morning. Just got done with breakfast. Uh, it's got a little bit of a light rain today, so we deployed the walls. You can probably see behind us. Got the walls deployed, had a little couple of breakfast boat tortillas things and a yogurt. We're good to go for the day. And I'm just waiting for the rain to stop. Just been a light pitter pat all morning. So it's, the forecast is showing dry. So hopefully we can get out and enjoy some of Door County and Peninsula State Park. Yesterday was pretty interesting. We basically ate our way through Door County, as Wendy likes to say. I'll put the name of all these places we visited down in the description. Let's go down the Hey guys, we're at Cape Point County Park. Checking out the limestone cliffs and caves, everything along here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. We're at Al Johnson's Swedish restaurant. And it's like the place you have to go when you come here. The cool thing is that they've got grass on the roof, and as you can see in the background, they've actually got goats on the top that eat the grass. So, what'd you get? I got the German pancakes. No, the Swedish. We're at a Swedish restaurant, so we have the Swedish pancakes, but they get very, very jam. Thank you. I got a Swedish pancake with lingonberry jam. Some Swedish meatballs on the side. And Matt got a roast beef sandwich and cheddar. And then, of course, we had to get some. We had to get some fried cheese curds. We're in Wisconsin. So we are entering the windiest road of Wisconsin, supposedly. The story goes that there's an architect that wanted people to enjoy nature as they came through this area. So he created a very windy road that you could see nature at all points as you're driving through it. And by making it windy, it caused you to go slower and be able to appreciate the nature around you. So it's not super sharp turns, but just soft little curves all the way through back and forth and back and forth for a couple miles. Just a short little hike, right? <laughs> we'll just go for a short hike. Yeah. Don't need to worry about water. Don't need to worry about hiking poles. No, don't throw anything. Don't take anything. Yeah, these are. This is the type of thing that we laugh at other people when we're prepared. Yeah, because they're walking without any water. Yeah, and we realize now we're that person. Yep. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, which bay is that? Cool. Overlooking Green Bay. Yep. Well, yesterday was Cape Point in the morning. We went to this restaurant that had goats on the roof. Or, I don't know if it's considered the world's or the U.S. windiest road. Then we went and sat in on this play. It was about country life. 
it was cute um it was culture guys out there you know what i'm talking about sometimes you gotta be a little cultured today's agenda is wednesday they're talking thunderstorms and showers in the afternoon sometime after 2 3 p.m so we're gonna go out and we're gonna rent a pair of bikes and we're gonna do some bike riding around the island and um, we're going to a lighthouse we're gonna go take a tour of a lighthouse so we'll take you along let's get going what kind of bike you got there we decided to rent some electric bikes today yep they are level one assisted so you have to continue to pedal them we'll see what we think let's go let's go Yeah, if you get to Peninsula State Park, this is definitely the way to go. This trail has a little bit of everything on it. You're looking over here. <laughs> my, my look this like trail. That. So we stopped at the Kana Island Lighthouse. Um, it was built back in 1869. To get to this island, depending on what the water levels are, it is an island. Other times if the water levels are lower, it's actually a little peninsula, connects to the local land just close by. Um, at this point, the water levels are high, so we had to actually ride on a little tractor to get across from the mainland over to the island, which is kind of cool. It's like a fire tower. And they got this really cool um, kind of handicap ramp that's put off the side of this thing. So it looks like some great views. Let's go take a look. stay the less likely you are to fall off the edge and then always lean inward that way you're not too close to the edge to fall over either because a gust of wind can just blow you right off do i have a fear of heights So the prediction is right now we're going to have storms from 5, 6 o'clock through the morning, kind of on and off. There's one big line coming through, then there might be a little bit overnight hit and miss. So it is nice to have the big awning, but in a severe storm situation where they're talking 60 mile an hour winds and thunderstorm warnings, it's best to pack it up if you value your awning at all. You don't want to have to worry about that thing taking flight or ripping um, with the expense of these, how expensive these awnings are, plus just the time of having to repair it. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's been pouring for probably two or three hours. We redeployed the awning, so it gives us extra space, and now's a good time to talk about gutters. If you've got a 270 awning, you definitely want to make sure 
you put on some gutters so you don't get too heavy a rain overnight and cause your awning to sag. Um, if you've got a straight awning, you can just lower one side, one pole, tip everything off that way. You want enough tension so as that water ponds up the top of your awning, that this acts as a natural break, natural valley, and I just use these carabiners to tie down here. You could just do the rope right to it. Just This just makes it quicker to deploy. Put it on here and you can see that water's just peeling off. Good morning. Wow. That was a very long duration rain event. <laughs> it started about 5 p.m. and it rained till about 3, 4 in the morning. Today's a drive day. It's Thursday. We're heading out. We are heading up to the UP to camp on some friends of ours. They have some property. So we're going to camp there and uh, we're going to get a little breakfast going and get on the road. Wendy's making us a quick oatmeal breakfast so we can get on the road. Still use the old backpacking stove. Love that thing just for heating up a little bit of water. Stop by the local store. Stop by the local store doing a little refill of the groceries. Yep. Last half of the trip. Wondering if thousands of miles away the sky is just as blue. It's as if I'm stuck in yesterday when I'm thinking of you. Cause when you have your morning coffee. I'm turning out the lights so I could dream And when you smile through the... Action! Action! What are you going to say? Hi. Say, welcome to my house. Welcome to my house! Nice. You ready? Okay. Say, welcome to my house. Welcome to my house. Glad you can make it. What? Say, glad you can make it. Glad you can make it. Glad you can make it. Look at how dense it is. And every time that you are closing your eyes, I will be beside you. And my heart will glide across the miles to fly right to you. Cause when I dive into the traffic The echo of your voice is all I hear I'm never tired of your laughing so far But ever so near So I lay my head to rest When the sun is rising I start a brand new day Ben and Jamie, thank you very much. This is their private piece of land. Um, they have a little lake house in the UP. Very beautiful piece of land. A lot of history here. A lot of memories been made. Um, you can tell it's a very special place for them. And uh, we feel very privileged to be able to camp on it for a night and spend an evening with them. And uh, had a nice meal. I got to enjoy the beautiful scenery and water and and uh, very peaceful. I'll show you my view out my trailer today. The view from the trailer. Gorgeous. This is Little Bay Danook. Well, thanks, Ben and Jamie, for letting us use your property for the night. It's a beautiful night we had last night. What's a little bit of the history of the property? So the house was built in the late 1800s. Uh, it was a duplex originally, and there was a farming family that lived on one side and a fishing family on the other. And in the fishing family, there was a dock that went out. So this area is called Farmer's Dock. There's a DNR boat launch uh, just across the road. So it's a pretty popular fishing spot here on Little Bay, Danak. You can see right across the bay, the city of Escanaba, and then Gladstone to the north. Um, the house has been in uh, Jamie's family. Bought it in 84? 85. So my parents bought it 
they were just driving around. I hear they like to stay, take Sunday drives after church and they were gonna go out, head out to the lighthouse at the end. And they saw the house, they saw the property and my dad took the sign down so that no one else would buy it. And uh, they told them that they were gonna have to tear the house down because it was pretty much condemned, but they looked under it and the foundation is good. And so they've been, they fixed it up for 35 years. So it's uh, definitely been a lot of work, but you know, we lived out here all summer. We didn't have any TV and so we did. We just worked on it all summer. Lots of stuff to do out here. Lots of family family memories. All the work done by, uh, you know, family would come out and do an all day work, be on something, make a big meal afterward, have a big party after that too. And it's mm -hmm. just been kind of a special place like that for us. Awesome, thanks. So today's agenda, we're gonna get ourselves packed down and we're gonna head to Indian Lake State Park for a couple of days. Okay, what are we making tonight? We are making foil dinners. Okay. So what's the ingredients? Cream of mushroom soup. Yep. Some green beans. Yep. Potatoes. Yep. Hamburg. Okay. And since we're in Wisconsin and picked up some cheese curds, we thought we'd put a couple cheese curds in. Yeah, that'll work. Sounds good to me. So. Let's start assembling. I start by putting a layer of cream, like cream cheese, <laughs> cream of mushroom soup on the bottom. You're gonna wanna flatten out the hamburg. This is the part that's gonna take the longest to cook. So if it's in one big clump, it's gonna take much longer to cook. All right, then I'm gonna season the meat with a little bit of garlic salt. Found these cute little spice containers. Um, so this one, it's half cinnamon, half garlic salt. Got one that's salt and pepper, so it's just quick and easy, doesn't take up too much room. Really don't need much more spice than this on a trip. And a little pepper. Next, a little vegetable, so whatever vegetable of choice you want to choose, whether it's green beans, corn, carrots, whatever sounds good to you. Then I have some potatoes. I actually kind of parboiled them to start with so that they don't take as long to cook. Then the cheese curds. Just a little bit of salt over top of the potatoes. So I've got two layers of foil here actually. Um, you want to keep these as flat as you can. sit there for a good 10 minutes. We'll flip them halfway through and we'll check and see how they're doing. Um, we ended up going for 20 minutes. We got busy talking to someone and I figured cooking a little longer won't make an issue or won't be a problem. So they cooked for 20 minutes. I checked them and they were perfectly done. And then we'll put some ketchup on them. But good. Very hot. Very good. You did a very wonderful job. <laughs> Thanks. Hats off to the cook. It tastes a lot like a cheese curd. It looks like a bag of uh, zombie brains. <laughs> really? It does spread like regular shrimp cheese. We're gonna head up to Pictured Rocks this morning and do a little bit of hiking, explore Lake Superior. Let's get rolling. Yeah, we came here to see Mosquito Beach, but uh, it's a rough ride, I guess and it's packed and they want you there by 8 a.m. to get in to hike into Mosquito Beach. So they do not recommend it at this point. So it's what, it's 10.30? It's a bummer, it's 10.30 already. So, so it fills up and people do crazy things so they're not recommending, they're kind of shutting it down. So 
start exploring some other areas. Sand Point, very beautiful, beautiful view. A lot of sandbars. got a little lobster like on the I'll last I'm just gonna make sure that I cover all the parts this time. <laughs> Kitchikippi Springs. Really cool. If you ever get here, it is amazing. Wendy. Pretty cool. Doesn't get old, does it? Hmm. <laughs> it's amazing seeing that water just come up to the bottom. Yeah. So no trip is complete without getting a couple of pasties when you're up in the UP. Lido's, they've had a family restaurant here on US2 for a lot of years. It says 1947. It's a famous recipe my grandma came up with. You gotta have a pasty when you're in the UP. They're just awesome. We usually get a couple for lunch and we'll take a couple with us for the drive home. So if you're in Michigan, check them out. They, in my opinion, they're the best pasty in the UP. Hands down. We stop every time. So what's inside it? Um, there's beef, potatoes, rutabaga, I think probably some onion, wrapped in a nice pastry. And then there's an argument between the people, do you put gravy on it, do you put ketchup on it, or do you eat it plain? We're a gravy family here. 